I'm Dane and today we'll be telling the history of the Fort Wilderness Railroad at the site. And I'm Joe from the Diz His and today we'll be giving the his on Fort Wilderness Railroad. So Dane, what do you think of the railroad? Oh. Really, what am I doing here? I'm here to chill. This is, this is, this is my video. Wait, don't forget me! I'm Scott from the No New Friends Podcast. Wait a minute, you're in this video too? Why not? I'm here! That's, that's fantastic. We're doing we're doing formal collab. Awesome. Alright, since we're here, you wanna get started? Yeah, let's let's do it. The story of the Fort Wilderness Railroad begins in 1972 when the locomotives were being built in Glendale, California by Wed Enterprises, the manufacturing division of Imagineering, the Manufacturing and Production Organization, or MAPO for short. The train would be four-fifth scale, fully operational, and modeled after the Forney 042T built by Baldwin Locomotive Works of Philadelphia. Disney had Robert McDonald design the trains, and four trains pulling five cars would be in operation. At the same time the locomotives were being built in California, the tracks were being built at Fort Wilderness. Buena Vista Construction were installing the tracks around the resort, but since they never had laid tracks in the sandy soil of Florida before, mistakes were made. Gauge rods and tie plates were put on, but not enough were put onto the tracks. Rails were not curved with a rail bender. Ballast were not placed correctly. Even some rails were the wrong size. The Fort Wilderness Railroad took up 3.5 miles of the resort. The track started near the reception outpost, went up the trail to the 1,100 1,100 loops, went past the 800 and 700 loops, then stopped at the main settlement station where guests could go to the Pioneer Hall, the Penning Farm, and River Country. Then the train continued past the 400, back down to the 500 loop, this is a big resort, around the 1,400 loop, past the 1,300 and 1,200 loops, and back to the Gateway Depot. The trains were shipped on flatbed trucks to Disney World, they arrived in the spring of 1973 and started testing immediately. Sometimes even guests could ride on the trains. By late November, the Fort Wilderness Railroad was operating on a schedule and was soft opened. Fort Wilderness Railroad officially opened on New Year's Day, 1974. Christy Zeisler Aldridge, Mickey and Goofy were at the opening ceremony where a golden spike was driven into the tracks and into our hearts. The railroad was free for Fort Wilderness campers, but for other guests it cost money to ride because, you know, capitalism. It cost 50 cents and would be increased to a dollar later in its history. Disney put effort into this railroad. The trains held 225 gallons of water and 175 gallons of fuel. The coach cars measured 19 feet and 3 inches and weighed 7,220 pounds. The cost of maintaining four locomotives was a lot. So Dick Nunes, the vice president of Disney World and Disneyland at the time, who was later named chairman of Disney Attractions, tried to get a sponsor for the train. He reached out to General Electric, but they decided to sponsor Horizons instead. Dick Nunes liked the idea of having a train at the fort so much he decided he was going to estimate the removal of the track and build a new, safer track. The reported cost of an overhaul was $3 million. This idea never went anywhere, though. The costs of maintaining the train grew larger and larger. Some reported incidents because of this were water not being filled up correctly or not being able to hold enough, and the train stopping and leaving the guests stranded. 
The noise of the whistle and the loud train chugging annoyed some guests. The track that was not installed properly started showing its age and started warping to a straight line at some turns. These track problems led to small and non-life-threatening derailments. The train tracks were out in the open at Fort Wilderness and no gates around them, making it unsafe to be around the tracks in case the train would round the bend and the conductor couldn't see. All of these problems would continue until that fateful day. In 1979, a girl on a bike would be struck by one of the trains. Although she was not seriously injured, she was still injured, and this was new big news. The railroad would close in 1980. Buses replaced the train for a short period of time. Dick Nunes liked the idea of a railroad. He thought Walt would like it too. So he tried to save the idea of a railroad a couple of times throughout the years. When Buffalo Junction got announced, they were going to have a train that connected Fort Wilderness, Buffalo Junction, and Wilderness Lodge. All ideas didn't happen. As a matter of fact, Buffalo Junction didn't happen either. The locomotives were moved to a warehouse where they would stay, even being moved outside at one point, and began to rot away due to the Florida elements. Two of the cars would be moved to Pleasure Island and used as ticket booths. It was repainted a dark green color and then repainted again to a wild purple. They were both removed from Pleasure Island and replaced with more permanent ticket booths. One of the booths was taken to the Typhoon Lagoon parking lot where it would just sit. Not exaggerating there, it had no purpose and it didn't do anything and it was poorly hidden. Fort Wilderness trains were in trouble. The foreman, and a foreman is essentially an engineer's boss at the railroad, and in this case, a rail yard, he considered scrapping them. Luckily, he decided to sell them. Two cars went to a playground and four to a zoo. After the cars and locomotives had been rusting and rotting away for about 20 years, the Carrollwood Pacific Historical Society, led by a name named Michael Brogy, who initially found the trains while doing research for his book, Walt Disney Railroad Society, decided to refurbish the trains. Five years of negotiating led to the remaining 12 cars and all four engines were bought and transported to society members for refurbishment. Engine number one went to Jim Zordich in Oregon. Engines two and three went to Bill Dundes. Engine four went to Michael Campbell. Each of these men also restored the cars connected to the trains. Two of the cars were donated to a Florida preschool. One man who restored a coach car and an engine, Jim Zordich, sold them to John Lasseter for his backyard railroad. Around 2008, Bob Kelso purchased one of the cars, restored it, and returned it to Fort Wilderness to display at special events. This car was eventually sold to a family in 2011. This car is also available to buy on eBay. Three of the four engines have been made operational once again. One engine with a car is displayed in a museum in California. I couldn't find the exact name, but I think it is the California State Railroad Museum. Carol's side. Now, what do we think of this cool mode of transportation? I personally think it was cool to have another mode of transportation going around a single resort. What about you guys? Yeah, I think it's great. Uh, first of all, I love trains, just like uh, our boy Jared yep. loves trains. I love Fort Wilderness, so trains, Fort Wilderness, Beats, Bears, Battlestar Galactica, it's fantastic. Yep. And I think that if there weren't so many issues with the trains, I think that it would have been uh, great to have here at the parks. Parks. The, the parks? The resort? <laughs> Magic Kingdom? It, the Magic Kingdom's got a train. Well, you know, around the resort, I guess. Did you know that Joe's favorite actor is Michael Caine? <laughs> Top ten. Maybe Michael Caine, Top ten trains, yeah. Yeah. bears. What do you think of Thomas? Thomas the like Thomas Train? Yeah, Thomas, Thomas the Tank Engine. Yeah, yeah, I like him. He's a cool guy, right? Thomas the Tank Engine. All right. Oh. How do you know the song? Bye -bye. I had kids. I had kids. <laughs> All right. So, so uh, tell us a little bit about Yeah, that. check me out on No New Friends Podcast. It's the podcast for adults who like to laugh at adulting. We can be found on any streaming platform and YouTube. What about DizHiz? Yeah, you can find me at DizHiz.com. D-I-Z-H-I-Z.com. Go ahead and give us a follow. 
Alright, if you enjoyed this video, let me know by leaving a like and consider subscribing. It would make me a very happy man. And with that, we'll see you all in the next one. Have a magical day, everybody! Come <laughs> on!